What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Igmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So since last episode, I've been working a little bit more with our applied energistics system here. I've been trying to expand it out so we can do more stuff. Uh, I think last episode I had mentioned that I don't really know if there's anything in particular that we need the macerator for. Yeah, it turns out there is a recipe we do need it. We need it for the clay dust. You can only get it through the macerator. You cannot get it through the thermal expansion pulverizer. So that is one particular thing that we need that for. Um, so I just got done making these molecular assemblers. So if we look at the recipe for those, it does require a whole bunch of stuff. And in here somewhere, yeah, it requires these machine blocks from Extra Utilities. So that does the basic machine casings, which we've already set up the auto crafting, I think, last episode. Uh, the reinforced stone, however, does require this clay dust. Yeah, so we absolutely need that macerator for this particular thing. It needs grout, which is fine. We have that stuff, and then it needs some kind of stone. Easy. Then I had to set up recipes for the polished stone, so I made stone bricks from regular stone. Yep, anyway. So lots of recipes for this auto-crafting. It takes a lot of resources, and it was going to use a lot of wood. So since the last episode, I made a sawmill from Thermal Expansion. I made a resonant... I put all the uh, upgrades in here, and we are doing uh, one oak log turns into six planks this way, which is pretty nice, to be honest. If you can take a log and get six planks out of it, that's essentially getting 50% more per log. I like it. In fact, that's getting uh, three times more per log as if uh, you were to craft it normally. Uh, let's go wood, because in this mod pack, I think you only get two planks. Yeah, you only get two planks per log instead of the default four. So we get three times as much by putting it through that machine, which is fantastic. Now you can also get six uh, planks through the precision sawmill, but this is much slower. Now the precision sawmill does go into the recipe for the thermal expansion one. So I made a second one. Why did I do that? Well, because if you want to make sticks in this mod pack, you can take two planks and you get two sticks, right? Instead of four, like you get through vanilla method. You can take two logs and go to four sticks, which is a quicker recipe, one less thing to do, but again, you're getting way less sticks. So I was looking through here, and the manufacturer, you can get four. In fact, you could probably get, like, sticks really fast through that, but what I was looking at is there is no sawmill recipe here, or I guess the thermal expansion uh, saw. That doesn't exist, but the precision sawmill from Mechanism gives you six sticks. Okay, so we... Get six planks from one log through thermal expansion. We get six sticks through one plank through mechanism. Much faster, much more, well, not much faster, much more efficient this way. Okay. So, yeah, it's a little slower to do this than just straight crafting. But, you know, we save on our resources. And especially since we don't have a wood farm going, a tree farm going, it, it seems like the best method to me. So, I've also started coloring some of our ME glass cable. The ones that we're using specifically for piping channels around through P2Ps, I have colored black just so we can differentiate and we know, hey, this is the one that's only doing P2P channels. Let's not run a whole bunch of machines off it. Then off of the P2P channels, we're just using the regular Fluix for now. We could change that to another color if we wanted to, but I like just color coding these cables in such a way so I know that, hey, this is specifically for making or for running P2P channels off of. Just the way I do it. I think it makes it, it makes much more sense when you're looking at the network. Um, so the things that we or that I have been noticing since I've been doing all this stuff off camera is we are running out of space for our molecular assembler. The regular crafting recipes, we're running out of space. In fact, I've had to overflow some uh, items over here into this chest specifically because we didn't have enough space to put all of the patterns. Um, I did make 16K ME storage component. And I have upgraded these crafting storages to 16K because the 1Ks weren't cutting it for the recipes that we were trying to do. They just couldn't hold enough stuff. So I made the all four of those into 16K so we can craft quite a lot of things on each one of them. Uh, but I want to look at expanding the amount of crafting storage for recipes that we can do and the speed in which that our molecular assemblers can craft. So this is gonna go away. Um, I started this here, so it's just a dense ME smart cable. 
coming off a of P2P that's just running underneath the floor up into this cable. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do our standard 3x3 three three with the uh, dense cable in the center routine. So we're going to put molecular assemblers on all four sides, and then between those we are going to put interfaces, which apparently I don't have in my inventory. Interface. In fact, I think I have to make a few more, or at least one more of those. Anyway, so the interfaces can go like this between the molecular assemblers. So this interface can talk to two different molecular assemblers in this particular fashion. And actually, all four of those can talk to two different ones. So that's pretty cool. So now when we stack these, we're going to alternate the molecular assemblers. So now the corner interfaces can speak to three different molecular assemblers. That's pretty good. Uh, so we can also just keep alternating, putting interfaces here. These interfaces can speak to three. Mm -hmm. And if we go up one more level, we'll put more molecular assemblers on top of those interfaces. Now the ones in the center can talk to four different molecular assemblers. Yeah, so we can speed up crafting significantly by doing this. Uh, and we can also speed up more if you want to get crazy and start putting like molecular assemblers like this and this and make that thing into like a five by five. I don't think that's necessary, but you can do that if that's what you want to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this, put these around like so, and more molecular assemblers. The uh, other one that's going to go here in this corner is the one that we're using right here. And we had three more interfaces. Yeah, I'm missing an interface to make that a full three by three on the top. So let's make a new one. Perfect. Okay, and they come down here. We'll start putting these things together like so uh these i think i can no i can't shift right click so i guess i will yeah i'll just do that space click the items out of there and then we can space click oh i just made a mistake <laughs> i wanted to space click those in there but i filled up both slots so whatever was in my inventory now went into the me system okay let's not do that in the future <laughs> whoops now i know i didn't know that was actually going to happen but i guess it makes sense so I'll place that there we will just hold shift and scroll across those items. And the same thing here, we can place those in this interface, which is fine. Hold shift, scroll across like so. Good enough. Grab this one. And that goes in the corner. Okay, so I made 75 more acceleration cards. I'm not sure if I needed to make 75 or only 70 more. But anyway, if you hold shift, you can right click those onto each one of these molecular assemblers and it automatically fills them into the slots for you. So you don't have to open up the GUI on each one of them. Let's do this side like so. Got 30 more. And all done. I think I made the correct amount actually. Awesome. So now that this is done, it's not particularly good looking. But it is compact and efficient for what it does. And again, you can put more molecular assemblers on these interfaces if you want to on the outside and have them speak to five different ones. That's if you really want to. I don't find that to be necessary in most cases. So now if we go to our interface terminal over here, we can scroll down and see we have lots of space now for putting recipes in. So all these things that I took out earlier, we can put them into our molecular assemblers. Yep. So the next thing I think we should work on is our ore miner. Mm -hmm. Yep, we got all the stuff that we needed here, all the erodium that we were looking for in order to upgrade this thing. I think it's time. So let's grab our structure frame tier ones. We'll grab our erodium crystals. We don't need the laser lens out of here, but we'll grab all these different things. I have been taking these ores out, forging the ones that need to be fortune, and smelting and pulverizing the ones that can be smelted and pulverized. Yep, I think we're pretty much good to go here. We'll disassemble that. We will vein mine all of those, vein mine this, grab that, this, and that guy. The uh, magenta laser lens we'll keep here because I'm sure we're going to need that later on down the line. And because this uh, multi-block, I believe, changes size, we might have to move this hole over like the one diagonally over here maybe. I guess we'll find out here soon. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at getting this thing upgraded. I don't remember exactly all the resources that were required, but I think we we're just waiting on the erodium was all. So digital guide, I believe, is what we needed. 
So in order to make the ore miner tier two, we need 32 structure frame tier twos. Make sure we don't have any extras in the system. Nope, we have 32 tier ones on us. So let's do structure frame tier two. We will go ahead and convert those right on over. We made three. That's great. We're missing lapis. <laughs> yeah, another thing that I want to do today is try and get the... If, if it's possible, I would like to get uh, compacting drawers hooked up for all of this stuff. All right, so there is 32 of the structure frame tier twos, and we need 16 structure panels. So we can put four of those away. There's 16 of those. Uh, we need four modifiers, so we can do blank modifiers, null modifiers, or speed modifiers. This is probably gonna be locked down. Uh, we need mica in order to speed this up. So we can start using speed modifiers, but in order to do that, we need to get mica. Mm -hmm. So that comes from the void resource miner. Uh, so void resource miner, I believe costs about the same thing as the void ore miner. Uh, but the tier two, yeah, that's going to be about the same thing. So if, do we have enough erodium? Oh yeah. Oh baby. For six more blocks. Oh man, that's good. So we can go straight to avoid resource miner controller tier two, which is fantastic since they are the same shape, the same multi-block as the void or miner. So we can swap one out, wait for mica and swap it back. Yeah, that's going to be good. Okay. So we have that stuff set up. What else do we need here? Uh, yeah, the null modifiers. I believe those were using the recipe for the speed modifier. Let me just double check real quick. Actually, let's go back. Speed modifier. Yeah, that requires a null modifier. So we have to make the null modifier. Uh, which way am I going? This way. Okay, so the null modifier requires the interconnect, and those are the things that require all of the 10 blocks. Oh, boy. It's a lot of 10. Uh, so we need four more interconnects. Interconnects, how many 10 blocks are we doing? All right, so it is 16 per. Okay, so it looks like we are not gonna be set on 10 here. We're almost there, but yeah, we don't really have enough. Yeah, let's see. So it is 16 blocks of 10 per interconnect. We need four interconnects. So we're just a little low on 10. That's not a problem. It's only a few blocks, so we can uh, bust out sifting and try and make up the difference, so we will get to that. So no modifiers are the thing that we're waiting on. We need a laser core. We go from two laser cores to three. Oh, that requires more interconnects. Oh, boy. Or I guess more connectors. So just a few more blocks beyond what we initially saw, and then a laser lens which we can use the other colored ones that we already have so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so it is a matter of us getting 10 ore pieces. Pieces, these guys. And again, that comes from sand, dust, or gravel. Uh, and I, I don't remember, was it this one? No, the diamond gives you 10%, the iron gives you 20%, and the flint gives you a 20% as well. I don't think there is a change if you use sand or gravel. Oh, yeah, it looks like it's all the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some gravel. I am going to grab our iron stiffened meshes, and I'm going to start sifting. We'll be back. All right, guys, so I just did a lot of sifting, and we got our pulverizer pulverizing all these different ores. Looks like we chewed through the iron, the copper, and the gold. I have this set up to automatically pull from the ME interface up above. So it's just keeping the inventory full here. Once that's done, I'll turn that off. But yeah, as I want to process ores kind of manually, I'll put the ores in here and then we can do the same thing for processing uh, the different pulverized material. Yeah, so we need copper, silver, and lead. I don't want these to happen all the time because there are cases where I want pulverized copper or pulverized lead or osmium or whatever right so yep as we need them i just put them in there and then when we don't need them i deselect that and take off the auto input enabled setting probably osmium needs to go in there aluminum lead i think that's it i guess we've already done osmium or it's already been added to the thing uh so aluminum 
and lead. All right, so those will go ahead and get processed. Yeah, I think that was Osmium right here. Those will go ahead and get processed as uh, as we run out of ores. So I was looking through the digital miner. Oh, I'm sorry, through the di digital guide? Digital guide. I was looking through the digital guide at the void ore miner, right? So we're going to go ahead and make that here. Uh, it is not different in size, uh, only in height, right? So it's only one block taller that we have to worry about this thing. So we can place this up one more block, like so. I'll get rid of this. We're going to have to rearrange that as well. Oh, I did not grab... Oh, boy. Nope, I didn't grab it. Yeah, so we need to get the assembler, and then I need, I think, a couple more of the flex ducts. So let's grab some of those, and then the assembler. There it is. Awesome. So we should be able to start getting the tier two void ore miner going here. All right, just hold down, right click. Everything should just happen. Move myself into position. Yeah, this thing is just one block taller. I wasn't sure if it was going to uh, require something different or not. So the void ore miner controller tier two, let's check out the resources that this can mine. It's going to get cryonite, and we get that at 11.25% with a purple laser lens. We can still get more rhodium with the magenta if we want to focus on that, but probably we want to get cryonite because that's going to lead us into getting the next tier. Um, so now that we got that set up, let's give it power, and we'll just let it start doing something. And then, whoop. I need to give it... Oh, I need to make another change here. So that needs to go away, and this guy, he's move up one block, so it's got somewhere to put the resources. We'll open that up on top so I can actually open this chest and see what it's doing. Cool, and then we'll give it, I don't know, the magenta laser lens for now, so it's doing something while we continue on here. Is it not doing anything? It's got power. Oh, I'm missing a block. It didn't place that block because the chest was there, huh? There we go. So this is now using 5,000 FE per tick. I don't, was it 4,000 was the other one? So it's slightly more expensive, but our reactor should be able to handle that without much issue. So we'll just uh, let that go. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. Um, so we probably do want to work on getting the void resource miner. If we get the void resource, we can get the mica and then replace those null modifiers with the speed modifiers and make it go much faster. So void resource miner. We have to make the controller tier one. So what do we got here? We got nothing. <laughs> All right, so we need a machine frame. We don't have any of those. Okay, so we're gonna have to do some stuff here. I gotta go through, make all of these different things again. Uh, we need two more interconnects. How are we doing on 10 blocks? We have plenty of 10 for making the interconnects. Okay, so a little bit more crafting that I'm going to have to get done here. Let me go ahead and bust through making the tier one. We'll turn into the tier two. We'll swap that out, and then we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, that took a minute to get all the crafting stuff together for this void resource miner controller tier two. The hardest part of getting that was making this diode, which required machine frames and a whole lot of other things. So these machine frames... Uh, we can now auto craft pretty much everything. I don't think the heavy engineering block we have set up. No, I didn't do anything with the auto craft. We had some of those in here, uh, but like machine frames, iron casing, machine case. Like as long as we have the resources together, if I want to craft those, we can just auto craft them now. Yeah, mixed metal ingots are automatically crafted. They get compressed into the advanced alloys. Uh, I had to go farm up some rubber trees to get some more of the IC2 rubber. We'll have to figure out how to automate that in the future. Carbon plates are now automated. Uh, pulverized coal turns into the meshes, which turn into the carbon mesh, and then they get compressed. Yeah, so all this stuff, like we are coming along pretty good now with the auto crafting, getting lots of machines hooked up and utilizing those very effectively, in my opinion. Um, but anyway, we're trying to make the void resource miner controller tier two. Let's make that guy and you know what? I think we are missing out on some of these quests. I think we have some of these available. Let's take a look here. If we go to environmental tech, yeah, the very first thing wanted us to get litherite, or at least click this checkbox. 
It says, welcome to environmental tech. This mod features large multi-block machines like the solar controller and the void or miner. The multi-blocks can be automatically assembled if you right click with the assembler on the controller block that you wish to build the structure for. It'll tell you the materials you need. Once the materials are all in your inventory, right click the controller. So we've already done that. In order to progress with the mod, you'll need tons of lithorite. We've done that. All the crystals are used in late game recipes. And then we're going to get an experience reward. So let's do that. We will claim it. Okay. And then we can go back. So yes, we got structure frame tier ones. Those are now complete. We'll take that loot chest. Uh, structure frame tier two. Let's take this one. Erodium. Take the bottom loot chest. We'll do void ore miner, the top one. And the void ore miner tier two. Like so. And then we'll click the this button. I think that claims all of those rewards that I just selected. Okay. So now we got a lot of <laughs> rewards to go. Uh, let's get this thing hooked up though. First thing. So we can start collecting that mica. So we'll get rid of that. We will place our void resource miner right here. And then again, let's take a look at mica. Because I think we're going to want a white laser lens. So the clear one gives us a very low chance. The white gives us a higher chance. Let's go make ourselves a white laser lens. And then we're also, I think, wanting a purple one. All right. So glass. Get rid of that. This, this, this. So we want two of those. One of them needs to be purple. Uh, we don't have purple. What does it cost for purple dye? I can never remember the vanilla. Oh, that's just red and blue. Easy. Okay, so let's do that. Plus this one. So there's our purple laser lens. And then we'll swap that out for bone meal. Awesome. All right, so we got all the different things that we need here. Let's swap out this guy. Swap it out. We'll just go ahead and swap out this guy. Uh, like so, we'll swap it out. <laughs> All right, so let's use shift right click with, or shift right click? Why is it not letting me do that? Multi-block assembly complete. Oh, that's weird. Anyway, uh, so magenta, we'll swap that out for the white laser lens. There it is. Okay, so it's just gonna be a matter of time for us to get that mica. Every two mica that we get, and we've got a lot of resources pretty quickly here. Um, speed modifier. Are we getting two of these at a time? Or did I not see that? I'm confused in how those resources are coming in. It seemed like we just got two marble immediately, but I don't know. I wasn't paying that close of attention. Maybe not. Uh, so anyway, yeah, speed modifier. Uh, yeah, so two mica per, and then it requires this thing, which we can craft manually. Black quartz, we need wither dust, wither ash, so we got to go kill some wither skeletons, and black iron ingots, which I think we've already made. Yeah, so that's invar plus a tough alloy, HOP graphite, or graphite block. I think this is the way that we were making it before. Um, anyway, so just, uh, just going to be a waiting game here in order for us to upgrade those. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and open up some of these loot chests and see what we get. So this one, we get andesite. A full stack of it. Hmm. We get a bear trap. All right. We get crafting unit. Two of them. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, sturdy casings. We have four of those. That's not bad. And then brew stand. Eh. Eh. Brew stand. Not that great. So I guess our best reward so far was the crafting units, which should uh, be utilized, I think, to make co-processors. We can make two of them. So engine engineering. Let's make two engineering processors. Go and get those things crafting up here. It just takes a few seconds for those. And should be done. Okay, so engineering processor plus these crafting units this will allow our processes to do more than one item at a time so these things turn into multi-block structures so i want to make at least two more so all of our processors have that and eventually we'll probably want something like oh i don't know 16 or so cr crafting co-processors per cpu yeah that way we can do all sorts of different auto crafting if you have to use many different machines at once or craft many different things at once like Nothing's going to slow it down except for the speed of said machines 
or our molecular assemblers or whatever. So it's definitely important to have a lot of those coprocessors available. All right, so yep, I'm gonna go ahead and wait for a little bit. Hopefully we'll see some mica here pretty soon and then we can look at upgrading our uh, environmental tech, uh, I guess void or minor void resource miner multi-block to the speed, speed up version. All right guys, so I was just looking in our chest I went AFK for a little bit, probably like five minutes or so, and we got four mica now, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah, mica is definitely what we're looking for. Uh, so I need to disassemble our yeah, void resource miner, the multi-block structure, so we can upgrade those two null modifiers to the speed modifier. Now again, that does require the null modifier, some redstone, erodium, and then the lonsdalite crystal, or however you pronounce that. Uh, so black quartz, wither ash, yep, and then uh, black iron. So we have wither dust, but I saw that we had wither ash in here, and I'd rather use that. We have more of it, and I don't think that's really used for much else. Okay, so there is three of those for one craft, then we can do that and get two speed modifiers. Now I don't really know how much faster that makes our void resource miner, if it's like 25% or 10% per one of these or whatever, but I do know once you get all of those in there, it definitely makes the entire unit go that much faster. Um, so that's saying it's only using 482 FE per tick now. Didn't it say it was using like 5,000 before? I'm very confused on that. Hmm. So I guess we could kind of look into our chest here and see, like maybe if I take everything out, maybe we could see how fast we get stuff in here or maybe I had to break the controller and place it back. I'm not exactly sure. I feel like we should be seeing stuff that much faster, but yeah, check that out. We did get two stone. That's very interesting. So, Sometimes you get two resources, I suppose, and sometimes you get one. I'm not really sure how this all works out, but yeah, we just got two gray terracotta. That is very interesting that it gives us two sometimes. So maybe that's how we got the mica. Maybe it gave us two mica or four mica all at once. I don't know. But anyway, uh, we need to do this for two more of the null modifiers turn into the speed modifiers. Let's wait for that to happen, and we'll be back, guys. Okay guys, so we now have all four of our speed modifiers installed. Oh yeah. I've been kind of watching this thing, seeing how fast it gets it, or it gets the resources. Then I remembered you can right click on here and it says the duration is 80. And it's now costing 1,180 RF per take to keep this thing running. So 80 means every four seconds it gets some resource in here, which is pretty awesome. Um, I was looking at these terracotta since we're getting a whole bunch of different types of terracotta what we can do with it It looks like if you put the terracotta through a pulverizer You can get clay out of it and then that's you know a pretty good way for us to get clay if we have a void Resource miner going all the time. We'll also get straight clay that way. I guess so that's another benefit um, But yeah, we haven't gotten any more mica I was kind of letting this thing go for a little while to get some more mica for next time because each tier of the uh, resource miner or miner whatever, you can put in more modifiers and we're gonna want more speed modifiers, which means we're gonna need more mica. Anyway, uh, so as saying before that I don't remember where I was seeing that it said that it cost 5,000 RF per tick and now it costs so much less. Yeah, that's the difference between the void resource miner and the void ore miner. And we put the void ore miner controller on the ground, we right click on it you can see that it says it's cost 5,000 RF per tick just to run it. That's without the speed modifiers. So if we put this on here, and it's going to see the multi-block and the speed modifiers, I'm curious to see how much power it's going to be using. Oh, goodness, 31,000 RF per tick. That is way more than our reactor can handle at this point now. Yeah. Mm, actually, does a reactor... Can a reactor handle 31,000? No, it can't. I, for some reason, I was thinking this thing could go to like 40,000 RF per tick, but it looks like we're only, or is that producing 21,000 in addition? I'm not sure what that thing is saying. 
This says that we're producing 27,000. This says that it requires 31,000. So I'm not sure where the difference is. <laughs> That's got me confused. But either way, if we're going to be using the void resource miner, yeah, we are definitely, or the void ore miner, my mistake, we are definitely going to have to keep a close eye on it or we are going to be running out of fuel very quickly on our reactor. Uh, we do want to focus this thing specifically on getting the cryonite, which is the new item. K-Y-R-O, this stuff. Yeah, this will allow us to make the blocks, which says it's witherproof, which is kind of cool. Uh, it'll allow us to make these blocks, which we can then upgrade to the Void Resource Miner Tier 3 and the Void Ore Miner Tier 3. So, yeah, we definitely want to focus our attention on getting that particular item. And I did get one of those in my inventory, which said our quest was complete. So let's claim this, and we'll claim this one. And then also I saw... Let's go back through the book here. There was another quest that we had complete from before. Yeah, I made some wood spikes when I was farming Endermen. I think I talked about I had to go to the end and collect some ender pearls last episode. Yeah, I made some wooden spikes for that. I thought there was one more. Ah, yeah, this right here. Resident upgrade kit. All right, let's grab that one. All right, so we'll claim all of those guys. Did I not? Why did I only get one? Now I'm super confused. I thought clicking this button grabbed all the ones that we had selected. Environmental tech. I don't know why that doesn't work. Okay, so we'll claim that manually, I guess. What a waste of time. Claim that one manually. So we pot this, we get launch pad. 49 launch pads from advanced rocketry. Are those even expensive? What are those? Concrete, black and yellow dye. Concrete is sand and ground. Okay, so it's not really that expensive. It seems cool, it's not that great. We get a music disc, just one whole music disc, and we get ourselves greenhouse glass, five of them. I think we got greenhouse glass before. I think that's the second time we've gotten that reward. But either way, that's still fine. Yeah, we are collecting these resources quite quickly now. There's another cryo knight. I'm not sure how many of these we're going to need, but I know it's two per structure, and it's going to be six more blocks per upgrade. So we're going to need quite a lot of the cryo knight. But yeah, as we collect these, we're also going to be getting the enderium and the litharite all together. We're focusing just on the cryo knight. And it does look like we are collecting two ore at a time now on this tier two. Or at least sometimes we're collecting two at a time. So that's kind of interesting. How's the power doing here? Okay, we still got plenty of uranium. And yeah, it seems like our reactor's keeping up, even though it says that's using 31,000. I don't understand how our reactor's keeping up, but it's keeping up. Uh, so you know what? I'm good with it. Guys, I think we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. We got some good stuff going on. We have made some definite progress here with environmental tech. Yep, that's just one of those things. We upgrade it. We leave it in the background. We collect the resources, and we'll revisit it when the time comes. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.